questions? Yes, sir. Uh, I went to the School of Business, and I was curious, why VCU? Okay. And how did you, did How'd you, I pick? How did they hire you? Okay. Question was, why VCU? Uh, why did I come to Virginia Commonwealth University? It was, in the end, it was pretty simple. Not during the, the uh, discussion, because what options would I take? I was living in California at the time. So moving, because my three children were off and about, so from a moving standpoint, is the easiest move I, I made. But more importantly, when I met with President Rao at the time, uh, we had a great conversation, and he was very energetic. And I think for him, he was willing to try something different, not the traditional route from, uh, nothing wrong with academic route, don't get me wrong, but from his standpoint, the business school was a unique entity, and he felt that it would be a good match if I could come here. So it was more of that relationship building that did it more than anything else. Um, when I came here, you know, I, I didn't know much about Richmond, but Richmond's been a great surprise for me. Certainly the business, businesses here are very good. Uh, it's a lot easier to travel than Los Angeles from that standpoint. Uh, so it had a lot of great things going for it. So that was really it. It wasn't necessary. Richmond was the draw, but it was a matching up of I felt that the school uh, was poised for great things. And that was really the biggest reason for it. Yes. Yes, ma'am. The question was about, are the characteristics the same across the globe for great leaders? I would say it's very similar. I think from the standpoint of creating the right environment, make sure you're clear in your expectations, that uh, one of the things on the great leader strategy was build character. And what that really means, let people know what you stand for. So when there's a crisis, they know what they expect from you. So from that standpoint, yes. I think the differences is how Leadership is carried out in different areas. You know, I talk about Japan. It's way different there from a leadership standpoint. When I first got there, my assistant, she was Japanese, Tomoko-san, uh, I would ask her, I need a copy of something. She would run down a hallway. And I was like, what are you doing? She said, I'm making a copy. So the expectations from the leaders that she worked before was that. Or I had a team of interpreters that worked for me. And many times, I, you know, open the door for them. They wouldn't go through. They were usually women. And I'm like, why? She said, don't embarrass me. You know, this is an embarrassment if you do that. So it's more of a cultural difference. But in the end, unless it's you're a dictator or something, it's going to be pretty much the same. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. So, so, oh, okay. So pretty much has whatever success and luck I had, is it different now for an individual in today's climate? It is. Uh, for a couple of reasons. I think expectations are a lot higher. Um, not that they weren't then. I think now when you leave and go somewhere, whoever's bringing you on wants immediate uh, return on that investment. So you have to prepare a lot harder. I think the other biggest difference is global environment we're living in. You're not in competition with just Richmond, Virginia, the US. It's truly global. Uh, that's probably one of the big ones, too, that you have to realize that, that it's different. The other difference, um, that's, those are two big ones. Now, um, this global environment has made a huge difference. I mean, and knowing that things change so rapidly how do you reinvent yourself? It's rare that someone stays with a company that long anymore. It can still happen, but knowing how to reinvent yourself, being able to find what they really want are problem solvers. You know, and I was pretty good at that. And so when they thrust at me in a different area, they expect me to figure it out. Arm me with the right people around you, because that's going to be very important too. But it's different from that standpoint, because it's rapidly changing. And how you react to that change it's going to be hugely important now. Um, 
Yes, ma'am. So how did you know that you wanted to leave like corporate America and kind of make a complete change? How did, yeah. how did I know? Yeah, I mean, what like kind of, you know, said I'm kind of, either yeah. I'm done with, you know, kind of climbing the Disney ladder or um, this is not what I want anymore, I'm kind of making a shift. It came to me in a dream. No, just kidding. Uh, <laughs> um, actually, as, particularly when I was in Asia, you know, I, I saw the power of education, the power of what they were doing there, and I said, I think I can make a difference when I go back. That really was the start of it. Um, I knew, hopefully, that I would be successful if I tried something different. Uh, I had a great career at Disney, and I had wonderful experiences. My, my kids grew up with Disney, and I have great friends there. But I was ready to do something else. I, I think I had done a lot. Um, it was a big job, you know, 20,000 employees and you know, 15 labor unions, you know, $2 billion property and revenue to take care of. It was great. It really was. I was ready to do something else. Um, but I wanted to do something meaningful. So I was fortunate. I, was, I could retire from Disney. You know, I'm an old guy. So I got to do that. So that was really it. And I wanted to make a difference wherever I went, and I felt I could make a difference here. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, how do you develop character, and how do you make that people understand that? I think your everyday actions are very important, developing characters understanding what you stand for, and be clear about it. You know, you, if you, for me, you know, I, I think from the standpoint, if you have a sense of inter integrity in everything that you do, that's a good base, baseline for it. So that's what I always started with. I think people trusted me for that. I, you know, I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm gonna be honest with you, you know. So, but it's different for everyone else. I mean, whatever those values that you have from a personal standpoint, if they match up from your corporate values, that's the best thing of all. So if you can match up those and your character's really built on that, everybody's personality is totally different. We know that. And you should not try to be someone you're not. But that's a baseline. Every lead is going to be a little different from the situation. But, you know, a lot of that comes from within, too, who you are as a person. Uh, so... Um, and that's why we talk about ethics a lot in business nowadays. How could people do that from an ethical standpoint? They do. Uh, but if you truly are, you know, it's a business, we understand that, too. You've got to make money. Uh, but there's a way to go about it also. So I don't know if there's a set way to do it, but a lot of that is your personal values along with your core business value. If they match up well, that makes it a lot easier for you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I think everyone, everyone heard the question, the second one up there from Shocker Smart, culture of success. Everyone wants to be part of a winning team. So once you start doing that, you know you can do this, you're going to be part of a winning team, it becomes infectious. You're going to stumble by doing that because what you have to do is actually stretch people to do something they didn't think they could do. I'm going to tell a little story because I know that person is sitting in the room. When we did that broadcast between Bangalore and in, uh, Richmond, it was actually in the School of Business we did it, it stressed people out. They probably thought, we shouldn't be doing this. What if it fails? How embarrassing would that be? We're going to do this. We're going to be successful. Now that we did that, I guarantee you, if we had to do it again, they'll say, we can do this. So I think once you build that, that attitude, we're going to be successful no matter what, it's infectious. And then you have strides beyond that you thought you could do. That's, that's what it really means. Okay? Any? Yes, sir. Did you ask a question already? No. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, if I was 22 today, what would I do differently? Compared to what you did coming 
I would prop, okay, when I was 22, I knew people worked hard, and I knew there was a lot of competition, but I didn't realize how much it was. Some things came naturally easy to me, for, some things didn't. So I think if I was 22 today, I would assess who I am and what I really need to work on. Sometimes people will give me feedback. I say, I don't do that. I don't, I'm better than that. I didn't take that feedback very well. So if I could do it differently today, I would say seek out the feedback, the things that I can get better at and accept it as we all have some shortcomings, we all do, and how I can get better at it. Some things you will never get that good at. That's the other part too. And if you can reconcile it with yourself, I just, that's just not me, I, I'm not good at that. I would do that differently. I don't know if my career would change. Maybe have been a lot better, who knows? Um, but I would do that. One of the things that, when I was at Disney, we had the Gallup organization work with us on making you better or really setting a profile who you really were. And I didn't know this at the time. So we had profiles for lifeguards. We had profiles for executives. And so when I went to visit Gallup, they were there in um, Nebraska, Lincoln, Nebraska. I said, I want to see what people think of me and how I responded to these tests and things they gave me. They wouldn't tell me. They wouldn't give me the, they said, we give you account of the general. I said, I want to know. I really want to know. We can't do that. So I convinced the person there to bring the books to the local bar and they showed them to me. Uh, so, but, and it really said, this is what, <laughs> don't tell anyone. <coughs> so, uh, but really I think that was it. That would be it. How I would assess myself a little better than I did before. Yes, sir. Biggest success, coming to VCU, I think it really is. I think from the standpoint of making a fundamental shift in what I've done uh, to what I've done, did in the past, I think that was, it was a big success from my standpoint. Biggest regret, I, when I was working on the project in Paris, we blew it. We were hemorrhaging money. Um, and I knew it. You know, when we were working on these projects, I knew we were, because we could, we spent too much money. And it bit us pretty hard. It was huge leveraging. You know, we built it on, on real estate play. The economy tanked in Europe. Real estate tanked. We had all this debt. And it was not good. And meanwhile, I knew we could have done a better job on controlling it. It was my job to do it, but I, I could see it. And I just... Didn't let it all go. It wasn't my, I wouldn't put it all on me, but that was a big bad. It was bad. Coming to a room and you're there with a the CEO and, and they're saying, not in our wildest dream in any of the scenarios that we think it would be this bad. That's not good. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so don't, I don't like talking about that one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> How do you get to buy in? I would say I don't have it totally yet. Seriously, I don't have it. I think some of the way I make decisions is different than what they've done, happened in the past. Um, I think I may put a lot more pressure on people, not intentionally. Um, so I don't know if I have total buy in, but I think it's done in a way that it's not malicious, uh, but it's different. Uh, so I have to work on that, to be honest to get more buy-in. You have shared governance in the university environment. Um, I wasn't used to that. You know, if you're, you can say, here's what we're gonna do. I mean, people usually did it. Not, not here. Not that they don't do what you ask them to do, uh, but so I have to work on that. Uh, and again, I think if you relay on these great leader strategies, everyone's important. I think that's one thing that I have to work on. You know, because I sometimes get too focused on where I want to go and I'm not seeing it. So I go back to, Maybe I have it here. These great leader strategies and say, okay, what am I doing wrong? Not that it's a total playbook, but there are some fundamentals that I need to do differently. And a lot of it is just making sure people understand you're clear in your objectives. So I'm getting there. I hope I, hope I haven't taken a poll lately, uh, but 
Um, the door is still open. I can still get in my office. I'm, I'm okay for a while, I think. <laughs> yes, sir. Biggest challenge throughout my career or just in general? Um, I, for me, um, I, I would say one of the biggest challenges for me personally, I think people don't, won't say this, but I'm pretty stubborn, <laughs> you know, and sometimes I try to do things so, so correct, and I won't talk about my marketing folks that are here today, do I change presentations, do I, yeah, I do that, and so I, sometimes I just have to let it go and say, it's fine. Um, that's been a challenge for me. I don't think it's a big problem, but it's been a challenge for me to say, we're ready to go. Don't laugh over there. So, uh, but it, I, I think one, something like that, I don't know if, uh, I'm very patient and maybe sometimes I give people too much room to improve and type of things. So I think that may have been a little bit of a challenge. I like to give people a second chance. And sometimes in environments I came from, you didn't get a second chance. And so I got tasked with that sometimes. Why are you doing that? Um, so things like that. But I don't think there was a huge, huge challenges. I think the big thing is to recognize when you need work on something for yourself personally, are you going to have that 20-mile march every day to work on it? I think that's a challenge. I think one of the challenges I have now is giving myself time to think. We all need to do that. Are you preparing every day? Do you take a stock on what you need to accomplish from the day? Do you have a discipline to do that? Do you give yourself enough time in the day, during the week, during the month, to focus on what the next one will be for you? I think that's a little bit of a challenge for me right now. Yes, ma'am. Okay, it's not my fault. <laughs> no, sorry, just kidding, I didn't say. Yes, ma'am. As a VCU business alum, yes. and not being from Richmond, so growing up farther away. Yes. Um, obviously, Shaka and the basketball success has been hugely exciting because it helped me sell the brand elsewhere. What's yes. going on? Mm -hmm. But it was fascinating to kind of see how many VCUers there were around the world in that space. And how do you see taking that energy and kind of activating mm -hmm. the Um, it's all about how do we take this tremendous asset we have from Shocker Smart, the basketball team, success of the team, et cetera, and how we launch that even further. That's the easy part. Uh, I think how do we sustain that is probably the more difficult part. Right now, I think when I travel around, everybody knows VCU. If they didn't know it, they kind of like, oh, I've heard of you now. Before, we probably didn't have that. I think the challenge will be how do we sustain that? How do we keep improving? How do we make sure we're going to be better than we were yesterday or next year, that type of thing? So I think it's a wonderful asset. Even when I was traveling abroad, we have a number of, of, of alumni that are coming out of woodwork now. We're, we're going to make a trip to New York at the end of May, and it's amazing how many people show up that want to be part of that winning team. And so as long as we can say you're still part of our winning team, that's it. One last story, and then I'll promise to be quiet and let him go on a break. You talk about when I got the job here, and I've told this story before. When I, I was, I'm at Chapman University, uh, Bramman, Bramman University, the chairman of that board said, congratulations, you're now in academia. And he said, I'll tell you a quick story. He said he was in the, uh, in the military, and he worked for Rumsfeld. Secretary of State, Secretary of Defense at that time. And they had this big meeting, Rumsfeld's supposed to show up, there were community leaders, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Rumsfeld doesn't show up. He doesn't know what happens, so he's embarrassed. He tries to do a song and dance to apologize. I don't know where the Secretary of Defense is, but, and he knew his office was just down the hall. And so he goes around the corner, coming out of Rumsfeld's office is a young intern, and he's like, what are you doing in his office? He said, we're Princeton grads, we take care of each other. And he said, if you can do that for your VCU grads to say, we take care of each other, because we're on the same winning team, then you've made it. So that's what I hope to do. And so I hope we're gonna be a winning team. 
always and get better and better every year. So I thank you for your time.